Greetings, everyone. I wish I had the ability to be there for the live Q&A for your um, seminar, but alas, the best I can do is give this recorded uh, introduction to what's called the Misesian after Ludwig von Mises theory of the business cycle. And so what we're trying to get across is the Austrian school's contribution to the free enterprise system. And so what I want to do is explain Ludwig von Mises theory as to what causes um, recessions in a market economy. Because that's one of the big arguments against free enterprise that, that people will say, oh, sure, free enterprise or the market economy or capitalism. You know, a lot of times these terms laissez faire, these terms can be used interchangeably. And so some people will say, uh, yes, it's a, it's a good system. It's very productive. Uh, it, you know, produces more stuff than socialism does. But gee, it has these periodic uh, boom bust cycles where things are really good for a while. Everybody's got a job, but then all of a sudden there's a huge crash. Workers get laid off and it's just the economy's in the doldrums for years at a time. And so that's one of the, the defects of capitalism. And that's so the argument goes why you need government intervention. So in that context, Mises provides a theory of the business cycle to show that, no, it's actually not capitalism per se or the market economy or free enterprise that by its very nature has these wild booms and busts, that that's not the case. Rather, Mises identifies what he said the mechanism was that's causing this. So specifically, uh, it has to do with the banking system and how it creates uh, credit expansion. That That's the term that Mises would use. So the idea is the banking system makes loans even though there hasn't been a prior act of genuine saving out of out of income in order to fund the loan. And so in that sense then, or because of that, interest rates drop to artificially low levels. And then because interest rates in a sense are at the wrong level, they're, they're artificially low, they're giving the wrong incentives or signals or guidance to the entrepreneurs. And so then they embark on long-term investment projects for which there's not enough genuine real savings in the economy to, to get across the finish line. And so this leads to a false period of prosperity, this feeling of, of euphoria that, hey, times are good. And so that's the boom period, or it might be characterized by what's called bubbles in financial markets, you know, asset prices getting inflated far above what you might call their fundamental levels. And so things seem good for a while, but then there's a crash. And so again, in the Austrian framework that Mises developed, what happened is there was what's called mail investments during the boom period because artificial interest rates were pushed artificially low that gave the wrong signal, if you will, to the entrepreneurs. And so they invested in projects that they really shouldn't have. Okay. So that's the, the Austrian theory in a nutshell. Um, so one implication of that, which is different from a lot of other schools of thought, most other schools of thought say like the Keynesians, for example, uh, think that the problem with a recession is the recession itself. Like, hey, something went wrong with the economy. Demand is inadequate. And so that's why you need the government to step in, so they say, to run huge deficits, to boost aggregate demand, to fill that hole in spending in order to get everybody back to work, to provide full employment. So from the Keynesian perspective, they tend to focus their fire on how do you fix the economy when it's in a recession? Because that's when the where the problem seems to be. Whereas the boom period, the, the Keynesians want to just keep the boom going indefinitely. Whereas for the Austrians, it's, it's actually the opposite. For the Austrians, the way you prevent recessions is not to have the government or the central bank come in and boost demand once there is a recession. Rather, you realize that, oh, what's causing this recession is the prior boom period where all these male investments were made. So if you really want to have a long-term fix and not have these wild booms and busts, you got to get rid of the busts, or sorry, get rid of the booms, and then there won't be busts anymore. Instead, you just have long-term sustainable growth year after year, rather than these wild upswings that are then followed by an inevitable crash. All right, so uh, again, for our purposes here, I think that's the level of detail we can get into. The central bank exacerbates this problem that in a regular market economy, the banking system would not be able to create new money by the very act of making loans 
in or to the degree to which they can do it when there's a central bank there waiting in the wings, acting as a lender of last resort, right? So when you go through um, the checks that the market economy would normally place in the banking ab uh, system's ability to inflate or expand the credit supply and push interest rates down to artificially low levels, those checks get taken away when you have a central bank waiting in the wings to bail out uh, institutions that have a liquidity problem. All right. So again, it's just one more example of how the Austrian analysis is in a sense, the opposite of the conventional one and the opposite in the, in the conventional view, the central bank is there as a moderating force to help the system get through a crisis. Whereas in the Austrian view, it's the central bank that helps set up the crisis. And so again, big picture, the Austrians are explaining that boom bust cycles are not the result of laissez faire capitalism, but instead the result of a banking system that artificially expands the credit supply, causing interest rates to not do their job the way they would in a genuine market economy.